Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report is your preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda and an update from your Oshkosh City Manager. Your hosts, Emily Makowski of Oshkosh Community Media and City Manager Mark Roloff. and thank you for joining us on Your City Manager's Report, your source for all of the latest and greatest things going on here in Oshkosh. Uh, I'm, my name is Emily Makowski, your host, joined as always by Your City Manager Mark Roloff. We'll devote the first half of the show to some hot topics here in Oshkosh, take a little break, and then dive into the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, September 23rd, 2014. So Mark, as always, thanks so much for joining us today. Great to be here, Emily. So first on our list here is, um, we've talked about this before, is the pick and save bus stop. Um, there was talk about moving the location. Um, what's exactly the arrangement that we decided on with the Fair Acres Shopping Center? We have pretty much have it worked out now. Uh, we impressed upon the folks at Fair Acres that it really wasn't feasible for us to be bringing buses in there. We do serve some uh, grocery stores in town directly to the front door. But the circumstances around Fair Acres are much different. There's more development that occurred. And what's interesting with this, with this overhead map that you see is this is from a Google Maps from 2011. And that sh extra strip mall that was placed in there between the pick and save and where the Taco Bell restaurant is, that's been filled in. And that's created more congestion. And there's also development to the east that occurred that is really through private roads. Those aren't even public roads. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be very difficult. And we showed pick and save, uh, we're able to demonstrate to them that it was gonna be a problem. So, you know, this is uh, taking a look from over at the uh, northwest corner of Murdoch and Jackson, looking towards pick and save. And that's where the bus stop's gonna be, just past that driveway. So uh, no one will have to cross the driveway to enter the pick and save store mm -hmm. if they get off of there. You can see there's cars exiting, but the bus stop, there's a sidewalk immediately to the left there, and then just a little farther away, just enough for one bus length to drop off uh, folks. We're gonna put a shelter in there because that was the biggest complaint we got that people in inclement weather didn't have a place to, to get themselves protected from the elements. This will enable us to put a, uh, a bus shelter there. And so uh, we, we've gotten that agreement with the folks at Pick and Save. Uh, actually, council meeting on Tuesday will actually appro formally approve the easement that we're getting from them, which is normally what we do when we get a bus stop uh, approved from anybody. So uh, you can see that you know people uh, do use that bus stop, and it's uh, it was very important for us to serve uh, anybody who wants to use a Pick and Save store or uh, the Route 4 on the north side of town. Uh, I think it's a good... Um, outcome. I know there's some people who disagree with that, but I would suggest that you know, let's just give it time and, and let's make it work. Uh, but you can see people are using the bus stop. People are getting off at the bus stop. So it's, it's popular and it'll continue to get popular as long as people know that that's where the bus stop and the bus route is going to be for the foreseeable future. So we're very pleased with the, the outcome that's come from that all. Yes, and you can just see how busy it is there, I mean, at, throughout all this video here and the amount of traffic that goes through there with the, the development that's happened there. There's just a lot going on. So um, after talking with Jim Collins, I know he said that that was the safest option as well for people to avoid traffic and things like that. So we're looking forward to it. Um, our next item here, um, an update on some wheel tax information. Um, we've been hearing about it in the news a lot. The city of Appleton is currently doing it. Is this something that the city of Oshkosh is looking into adopting in the future? Not at any point in the future. I uh, have been watching what's been going on in Appleton, and there were some issues about special assessments, which you know could arguably be used here. But there's always a danger with special assessment policies because there are people who we have We've assessed a lot of people uh, in the six years that I've been here because that was our policy. To change that policy is to say to those people who are already paying assessments, well, you're gonna pay these assessments and then you're gonna pay for others' assessments with, with something new. So uh, before we get into a wheel tax discussion, we need to have an open and honest debate about the issue. What, uh, why is a wheel tax needed? What would it be used for? What would it replace? Those are all legitimate questions that, that I would prefer to wait until we've uh, exhausted our options for uh, what revenue sources are out there, and particularly, what would we do with something like that? Mm -hmm. And I don't think the council is interested in jumping into it right away. They want to learn more about it, and I want to educate them more on it about what the wheel tax means and what we can do with it. 
Until then, I think we should just uh, do a little bit of wait and see. Okay, so kind of take a look at what the advantages and the disadvantages, both logistically and strategically, I guess. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this we will or will not be proposing on the 2015 budget for sure. This will not be part of the 2015 okay. budget. I have no plans to include it. It's going to take more than just a couple weeks, mm -hmm. and we're going to be delivering the budget to council in a few weeks. Uh, we don't need to muddy the waters with something that could actually drag out the process. Right. Um, another current development going on right now is the Menominee Park Zoo Master Plan. Um, they've hired a, an associate to help us out with this, um, and there's going to be some public in input meetings here at City Hall coming up in the beginning of October. So uh, what exactly is the process with the master plan development? Anytime you're doing something in, with any master plan, the first and foremost, you really need good public input. Uh, people who use the zoo in this case, who have some history with it, and who have some ideas. They, maybe they've been to another municipal zoo and have seen something. Is that something that we can do? Things they'd like, things they don't like. Um, and so we're gonna have some uh, open house type of workshops to just get input from the public. Mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna be Wednesday, October 1st and Thursday, October 2nd, right here at City Hall, uh, room 406 upstairs. But it's gonna be all day. Mm -hmm. So there's no formal presentation Come by any time during the day on Wednesday or Thursday of that week and just stop in, see what we see what information we have and give us your input. It is that open-ended of a, a of a public input session. Mm -hmm. Just want to know what people are thinking. And of course, anytime if you want to provide provide input, you can certainly contact our parks department. Yes, and I know, like you said, the public input is hugely uh, taken advantage of in, the, in these planning situations because um, ultimately we're serving the, the citizens of Oshkosh for this. And um, I know the parks department takes it very seriously in having quality, quality uh, exhibits and everything like that. So I know it's important for, for people to get out there and give their opinion. We did it for all of Menominee Park. We did it for South Park. Mm -hmm. And so this is a big facility and it, it does require a lot of input because whatever we do out there is going to be in place for 50 years. And there's so many great amenities that we have in the zoo. And with the Herrenberg uh, Family Foundation, they've, a, they've been able to make the zoo free. So we want to make sure that it's relevant for people. If we're going to make it free, we want to make sure it's enjoyable experience and mm -hmm. show them that even though it's free because of a great donation from, from the Herrenbergs, that it's still, it's worth their time to come to. Definitely. We had to take the opportunity to show some cute little animals from the zoo as well. So um, uh, if you haven't gotten out there, I think the season is actually coming close to the end um, once the weather gets a little bit cooler. So make sure you get out there and visit sometime. Um, Next item on our list here, Mark, uh, a little update on GoEDC. I know there's always an update with, with this organization, so what's the latest? Well, GoEDC, again, is the Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation. Uh, was formed formally back in June, and uh, it's our economic development organization. We we're redoing, uh, reorganizing to uh, consolidate our efforts, and uh, we're going to be recruiting for our first chief executive officer. In fact, we're in the middle of doing that uh, doing the recruitment process right now and our goal is to interview and select somebody so that that person is able to start around the first of uh, January 2015 so we're really excited that that process is going uh, we're also going through uh, initiating a fundraising effort because we have to pay for this position and we're going to be reaching out to the business community the city is going to be committing resources of its own but for the most part an organization like this really gets funded by the private sector. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're going to be starting that. And then we're also putting out a request for a proposal, an RFP, for market, developing a marketing plan and uh, developing our website so that we can promote Oshkosh and what, when people want to look for information about Oshkosh and perhaps business opportunities or ways to grow in the community, we'll provide them with information through this marketing plan through our website. Uh, so we've got a lot of activity going on right mm -hmm. now, and I'm really, I'm really pleased with the progress we're making, the contributions in time and effort from our business community has been nothing short of outstanding, and really appreciate everything they've done to to move this effort along. Yes, and I mean every time we ask you about this, there's always always progress being made. So we're excited to see what else we have going for us in the future with this. 
Um, and then our last update of our first half of the show is the field operations facility. Um, you, every time you drive past, you see something new, and um, I guess what's the what's the latest with that, Mark? Well, here here's a live shot of what's going on. Fortunately, it's a very nice day when we're shooting this. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that a lot of earth moving is going on because uh, once we have the old building torn down, now we have to get the uh, everything leveled off to be able to start pouring the foundation for the remainder of the garage itself, uh, the storage garage. But there's also a lot of activity going on the backside. We're relocating the uh, the, the yard, yard waste, waste site. <laughs> yes, the yard waste site. And so we're going to be uh, we're going to be moving that on September 29th. That'll be that'll be moved. And then uh, just more activity getting the fueling station in, which is actually a little bit to the left. It's out of camera shot here, uh, but uh, the work is continuing. We're we are. Uh, Estimating that we're going to be done around uh, March of next year, a couple months later than we had originally, but um, we're still in pretty good shape on that. We wanted to get it done in 2015, and, and we'll reach that goal. So we're mm -hmm. we're excited that we're we're progressing along, and uh, it's it's coming to it's coming to um, to gel and everything. Uh, it's a little tight right now because we're moving folks in and. Uh, we're moving and building and working at the same time, so that makes it difficult, but our public work folks have been nothing short of outstanding in making sure that they can continue to do work for the community at the same time as uh, moving into new digs. Yes, well, it's wonderful, and we're always excited to hear the latest updates on that. Um, so now it's that time of the show where viewers have the opportunity to ask their city manager anything they want about the city, uh, about things going on here in Oshkosh. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the question mark question is this week. So the question this week is, how is the city responding to the increase in traffic delays caused by trains? And uh, I guess it's kind of a hot topic. Um, there's been kind of an increase in traffic, really. A lot of increase in the traffic. Uh, the one thing I always like to point out, and I, I hate to be looking like we're punting on this issue, but uh, the city doesn't have any control over the trains. The trains are regulated at the state and mainly federal level. And that's um, a common misconception, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of folks think because it's a city street we can we can um, enforce it, but it's really more bringing it to the railroad's attention when we have a problem. So if you do notice something, you know, call the police department. Don't call the emergency number. You know, call, call the main number, uh, 236-5700, and let them know what's going on. Uh, but we are aware of it. Uh, you know, we, we have to monitor it for public safety purposes, whether it's a police call or a fire call, we want to make sure that we can move folks around. So if we become aware of a, a train delay, we immediately have to spring into action to be ready. We do have a fire station east of, uh, east of the tracks over there at Bowen and Murdoch, uh, but, but that's the only one east of the track. So if they happen to get pulled to the west side, we need to know if somebody needs to get pulled to the east side. And our station 15, our main station downtown, is close uh, but not on the right side of the tracks or the east side of the tracks so they may have to move if there's a fire call so we're we're constantly in contact if we're aware of a problem mm -hmm. but um, it does cause some delays it is a legitimate issue that we have to be um, be ready for so if you are aware of something give our police department a call and we'll uh, we'll take a look at it whenever we can yes and it's great to know that those resources um, won't hopefully won't be affected for the most part by train delays that we have those things available on both sides of the tracks. Exactly. So uh, if you'd like to send a question to Mark, you can simply email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us and he'll answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. We're going to take a quick break here and when we come back we'll dive into the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, September 23rd. We'll be right back on City Manager's Report. Stay connected with Oshkosh Community Media Services and the City of Oshkosh. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, 
YouTube. Sign up for e-updates. More resources, including video, at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. Oshkosh Community Media is your media on your schedule. Connect with us today. Want to know what's happening in local government? Stay in the know with City of Oshkosh Government Meetings, live on TV City Cable 10, online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org, and on Community Radio WOCT 101.9 FM. Miss the live coverage? No problem. Catch replays on City Cable 10. Stream online from oshkoshcommunitymedia.org or visit youtube.com forward slash Oshkosh Community Media Services. back to City Manager's Report. I'm Emily Mikowski, joined as always by your City Manager, Mark Roloff. So, uh, second half of the show, time to dive into the City Council meeting agenda um, for Tuesday, September 23rd, 2014. Uh, Mark, the very first item we wanted to talk about um, is to approve the final resolution for the cold mix asphalt paving. Um, I know this was mentioned earlier on, um, so what's, what's the final resolution here? Are we cutting back or what? Well, there, uh, the problem that we faced was that our gas costs were going up this year, and that's in our public works department along with our cold mix program. So it was at risk of, of getting uh, scaled back. And we decided we're going to scale it back a little bit, but there are streets that we continue need to do, especially if we're going to be uh, maybe pulling off the throttle a little bit on some of our street projects. We still need to do the cold mix asphalt program. That gives us, uh, that buys us some time in dealing with some of these major street problems. If we can put a cold mix, uh, cold mix patch on it for say five to eight years, that, that stretches out our need and the urgency to get some of these street projects done. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, a handful of projects are on there. Uh, everybody's been noticed. If you're impacted, you've already been noticed uh, by the time you're looking at this. But um, it's something that everybody needs to be concerned about so they know that we're still not backing off on getting things done. We may slow down a little bit, but we, we can't eliminate it. Mm -hmm. So really a kind of a way of stretching it out and getting the most use out of that street that you can. Exactly. Okay. Um, up to the next up, uh, item here, item number 21, uh, for the holiday parade, get our little plug in here, for November 13th, it's an approval of a special event. Um, and this is a really big, a big thing here in Oshkosh, um, the, holiday, the holiday parade in November. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, you know, we, we call it the holiday parade, you know, mainly because it's so early. It really it can't be called a Christmas parade or anything like that. It really is because it's, it's before Thanksgiving. It's, it's before the entire holiday season. Kind of kicks it off, really. Yeah, and the cha this is the Chamber of Commerce function, so I know we get questions about why that is. The, the chamber calls it the holiday parade because of that. They want people to, to be able to experience downtown Oshkosh, see what it's all about, and maybe uh, before you start your holiday shopping, that you give downtown Oshkosh a try. And it's a wonderful event. A lot of community pride brings out families. Uh, the other advantage of doing it in uh, mid-November as opposed to late November, the weather might be a little more cooperative. It's so true. It's <laughs> yeah. so true. And I hosted it last year um, for our T CATV2 coverage, and it actually ended up snowing that night. So uh, it was the perfect perfect atmosphere. It wasn't too cold, but we did get a little bit of holiday weather. So. Right, but mark your calendars for yes. November 13th so you can watch the show. Yes, and the theme this year is Rockin' Holidays, so we can look forward to some fun music themed floats as well. Should be good. Yes. Um, our next item here, another approval of uh, a couple of special events, the Saturday Farmers Markets and the 4th of July Parade, both on the same day, in the same location typically. So how are they both going to happen on that in that same time? Well, this is the first time since the Farmers Market moved from the City Hall parking lot to Main Street that there is a scheduling conflict because with July 4th has not been on a Saturday up to this point. And I really appreciate the Farmers Market and the uh, Vietnam Veterans Group working together to get this done. Uh, in short, the Farmers Market will continue in the exact same location that it's been enjoy enjoying for the last few years. And the Veterans Group has agreed very graciously uh, to basically just go around them. They're going to go, uh, they're going to start the same place they have on the, the um, uh, south end of the north downtown mm -hmm. and as soon as they get towards the, where the farmers market is they're going to divert themselves over to division street go around the farmers market once they get past the farmers market at parkway they're going to cut back 
you'll see more information now, but the real issue is that both are going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, we hope it'll bring people down, extra people down for the farmer's market, and we hope it'll keep farmer's market people around to go to the parade and enjoy that. Um, we're very, very pleased that the groups have worked together to get this. I think it's going to be a win-win and right. excited that uh, community groups recognize that events like this do require coordination, and they did it in advance. We're, we're doing this nine months in advance, and I think that's a real tribute to, to everybody for working together on this. Yes, great example of everyone working together in downtown Oshkosh and two great events. So it's, it's a, it, it is a win-win. You come down there and you're getting two, two things for your, for your buck. So uh, moving on to our next item here, item number 28, uh, moving funds from the National Guard Armory Area Stormwater Detention Basin Project to the Marion Road Storm Sewer Project. Um, and this is really kind of moving funds from one stormwater project to another? Right. Uh, it's not only is it doing that, but as we were doing the stormwater project here at City Hall and on Jackson Street last year, we noticed that we could probably ease up on that size, and we found some savings there by uh, diverting some of the water from Marion Road and cut it through the Rivers 2 project and get it out to the river without going back to Jackson Street. So that whole area of Marion Road uh, between Jackson and Wisconsin, we're going to divert a little more stormwater there. Mm. We did have some savings on the National Guard Armory project for this budget year, so we're moving those funds over to uh, the Marion Road project to get it done. So good news is uh, Marion Road project's under budget, and we're going to take care of, uh, or the Armory project's under budget, and Marion Road, we're just going to get a little something more done uh, that actually saved us money last year as well. So uh, it's a good outcome for everybody, and it will uh, improve stormwater management uh, in the Jackson Street area, Jackson Street. Um, by Pearl, that, that flooding issue, we're diverting some water so it doesn't hit that area at all. It goes right to the river. Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's been so much work going on with stormwater, um, and it, we're really progressing and gaining momentum. So would, are you pretty happy with the outcome of these projects in oh, the past I'm couple of years? I'm very happy with the outcome, but we are not done yet. Uh, I, I always point out we have 120 different watersheds in the city. So uh, this one at Marion Road helps take care of one immediately in Marion Road and helps what's called the Division Street Watershed. So that project helps two of 120 watersheds. We have a lot of work to do, and I ask people to be patient. Uh, we're gonna continue to have storms at some point in the future, and we wanna avoid flooding in every situation, but we're doing things to improve our INI program, inflow and infiltration, getting that out of, uh, getting uh, clean water out of sewers uh, so they don't back up in basements. We have to continue to do this, and you're gonna see us continuing to make progress in these areas. So it's not as simple as we're happy, we're gonna unfurl a mission accomplished flag. We've got a lot of work to do and we're gonna keep working on it. Right, and there is a lot of information on the city website too, um, and this, under the Public Works Department and Stormwater page. Um, so if you if you need to learn any more about stormwater or INI inflow and infiltration, there's a lot of stuff on there that you can check out. Um, our next item here, uh, dealing with the Riverwalk and park improvements for that, that section that we talked about a few episodes ago with the, the Boatworks Bridge going in. So what's the latest with that? Well, the, the, some really good news. Um, you know, we've been working on the bridge for you know, most of the summer, uh, but there was an opportunity to potentially get some additional grant funds to start doing some projects that had been in the designs for a long time in the plans, but they, they weren't part of the Riverwalk. Mm -hmm. You see the highlighted area here, you see the Boatworks Island, and there's the bridge that's gonna be going across, connecting to the island, going uh, west to east, and that's something that we're actively working on. But immediately to the west of where the, uh, the inlet is, where there looks like there's been some boat slips, we're going to put the, uh, a loop to get the, the Riverwalk Bridge down to ground level and in that area we're going to be able to put a, a sh park shelter and restrooms that will be able to be used by people using the Riverwalk and that's due to an extra $350,000 grant that we got. The total grant funds that we're asking council to approve are $944,000 so almost a million dollars and that's because our staff has been working feverishly mm -hmm. towards getting grants and when they saw this opportunity this grant couldn't be used for Riverwalk but it could be used for park buildings so we said well we had on the drawing board to do a shelter but we just didn't have the money for it and essentially we're getting the shelter you know, practically for free 
uh, and we've got a little extra money. As you see, 944, the rest of it, almost $600,000 is for that bridge that you see that's just getting finished uh, as we speak. So we're very excited that the south side of the river is going to have a little different character than the north side of the river walk, uh, but it meets the, the unique uh, geographic uh, features we have out there. So we're real excited. Um, this will be done by the end of the season. Hopefully before the snow flies, people will, people will be able to go out there and enjoy at least the river walk and then see some of the activity going out there with the, the shelters getting built. Definitely, and it's gonna look so nice when it's all done. And so really what this item on the agenda is, it's formally accepting those grants so that we are able to do all these cool projects, right? Correct. Okay, um, another item that we wanna talk about is uh, the budget workshop coming up on September 24th. Um, what are, what's the goal of that workshop? The main purpose of this is to go over the capital improvement plan. This was actually discussed by the plan commission but they have a very narrow focus. Theirs is just about how it ties in with the comprehensive plan. The last um, of the pre-budget workshops, we have three workshops before I submit the budget to kind of get council up to speed on where we're going. And then once I deliver the budget to them, then we talk about the budget document itself. So this is the last budget workshop before they get the budget. And here we're gonna be talking about the capital improvement plan, giving them an idea of why we're making changes um, to some of the priorities for the next five years give them an overview of that and talk about where we're going to be able to go with streets given the fact that we're going to have some uh, borrowing limitations over the next few years. So we're excited about um, being able to get this information to council early so that they're not struggling with um, looking at this stuff with such a short time frame uh, to review it. So we have a 2015 to 2019 capital improvement plan that's out there for council to talk about and we're just going to give them as much information as possible. Yes, a lot of important information too. So it's great that we're starting early here. Um, some other important information that you're going to talk with council is about the employee clinic. So um, what's the update on that? Well, this is still a proposed clinic. Um, the school district and the county seem to be moving towards it and they've asked us to partner with them. And we're meeting with our employees right now. My goal will be to report to council on Tuesday what we've learned over the last few weeks as we've talked to our employees and to see if it's feasible for us. Um, so, we, But we want to hear what we heard from the employees and share that with council because if the employees don't use the clinic, it really is a waste of money because uh, then we will have invested in something that people don't use. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to educate the staff on what this entails and we believe it will provide significant cost savings but only if the employees use it. So we want to find out what features would be in such a facility that would get them to use it and, or, and will they still use it? So usage is going to be the big thing, and you're going to be hearing about that uh, on Tuesday. Yes, and so we're still in the really early stages of this, a little bit um, behind of where they are in the process at the school district or the county. Right, and so okay. they want to know that we're on board, and we're going to give them that indication. So as they make their plans, they're waiting for us. Definitely. Um, and then the last thing that we want to touch on here is the relocation of the yard waste drop-off site. We, barely, we briefly touched on it uh, when we were talking about the field operations facility, um, but this... Uh, Relocation is going to be effective on September 29th, um, and where exactly is it going to be moving to? Well, it's not too far from where it is currently, but uh, remember, it's effective September 29th, so you see that the yard waste site is now going to be accessed off of West 3rd Avenue as opposed to Idaho. You'll still take Idaho, but, uh, but you got to go to West 3rd, so depending on where you're coming from on Idaho, you take Idaho to West 3rd, uh, you go east on West 3rd, and the drop-off facility is being moved to that location. So uh, just uh, look for the signs, look for the open gate. That's really the, the, the key. Mm -hmm. So look for the open gate and we'll be there to take your green waste. And uh, it, I know it's a little bit of an inconvenience because uh, people are so used to it being there for years, uh, but this will be a much better facility. Uh, it'll be cleaner, able to control debris getting blown around. So we're happy that we're gonna be able to, uh, to make this move. Wonderful. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of City Manager's Report. We are all out of time. Uh, thanks again, Mark, for joining us as always. And again, the City, Mount City Council meeting is this Tuesday, September 23rd at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on City Cable 10 or online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. You can also listen to it on 101.9 WOCT, which is also online on the TuneIn Radio app. Um, so don't forget, if you have a question, question for City Manager Mark Roloff, you can email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us, and he'll answer it on the next episode of CMR. So as always, thanks so much for joining us today on City Manager's Report, and we'll see you next time.